So we've finally arrived at the end of the vent for the basement. You saw this on the last video. We got this in. We left off here. <clears throat> now what happened, as I was explained before, my goal was was not to create a trap. So if you look at this, let's see. The bubble goes to the left, which means it's uphill going that way. All right, so keep it in perspective, back up. Now, if you look here above the doorway, you can actually see it's pitch. I mean, it's really going uphill. And I did reach the peak. Here, you'll see that the bubble is way up there. What happened, if you look at this side and this side, these old houses, like, you know, this, this old house uh, saying, they settle and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if I put, well, you can see the pipe, the distance to the joist here is about the same as here. So I actually didn't follow the joist on purpose. What I was doing was trying to stay inside this cap. Of course, when I drilled it, I hit a, uh, a screw anyway. I pulled two screws out. Look at that. One there. It was one there and one there, which is right in line with the pipe. So being a smart guy, I go, hey, let me get these out. So I pull them out and I move them here. I start drilling through. I hit a screw anyway. Eh, Murphy's Law. So, I got super pitched there, and that's keeping with the doorway. The idea was there's a step up here of eh, eight inches. It's an eight-inch step. And I could have went through the wall first and then crossed back here. But the idea was we had more height on this side. Now, that when they do the ceiling, if they box it, you as you step up, you'll miss. Uh, you have more height in the doorway. See, so I did it after the doorway, so you have more height as you step up. So it goes around, and uh, right about here is where I reached the peak. We're still uphill, and here it's kind of looks like it's level. Well, not really. The bubble's starting to go to the right now, so. This street 45 combined with the regular 45 was a way to start, uh, I made a hinge point there so I could start pitching down again. And so basically by the time I get on this side, I got hard pitch again. And I put a bracket here to pull up on the pipe. So this is really the high point. You see it level here. It's not really level. The bubble's still going to the right. So this, yeah, these two fittings are the peak. This is the high point um, on this side of that TY. So that's still good. Regardless, I did not create a trap. And the pipe comes around. If you look here, I'm starting to come downhill more. I'm keeping my pitch. Downhill, downhill. Uh, here, I'm still going downhill, downhill. Here, I'm still going downhill. And you know what? Here, I hit an elbow and it definitely goes downhill. <laughs> and um, at this point, it doesn't matter. And I tied back here. If you remember the old video, this was a clean out. It was actually a, a female inch and a half, uh, female adapter that was supposed to get, uh, a Studer AAV, but that was not going to work. So we had to go this way. So the vent is now hard piped in. And the reason I hugged the wall, in case you're curious, take this off and take this off is I still have the Navions to vent. And I did it this way because if you look, I'm now beyond 
the Navion. Maybe you can see it better from another angle. I'm um, just showing you the reason why I hugged the wall. Yeah, here we go. There's the Navion intake and exhaust, and I stayed out of behind it. See, that way. <laughs> it's kind of get hard getting used to this HD phone. This thing is pretty wild. And here again, I hugged the wall and just did a jog around. Uh, this is the cold inlet feed for this Navion. And I hugged that corner because here again are the input and exhaust for the Navion. So I wanted to be let's behind that. Let's see if we can get it there. Yeah. There you go. There's a pretty good shot. Because I actually have to come up out of here. Come up and go up this channel. Uh, and this channel that I created. This channel was created uh, probably around 1940s. I would imagine somewhere in the 40s or the 50s. It looks like they took a fire axe. And literally chopped at this thing. Look at this. This this was done. Yeah, this was done before the before power tools. You can even see the axe marks on it. So imagine some poor kid there with an axe or a fire axe, whatever the hell he had, and he's just banging away. Look at that. This he just and that's the way they did it in the old days. Now I cut this one, and I still had some chipping to do. But I had a sawzall, so I was able to, you know, at least cut two uh, starts and then chip it out that way. And the idea for this, I, I haven't figured it out yet, but I believe, um, I believe the, I, I believe it's going to be intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. And I spoke to that on another video. We're, we're going to go more in detail when we start that. Um, uh, another video I talk about Navi, I'm going to go back and rename that video, uh, for those of you who, uh, want to know about Navi on what I'm doing, I'm sure it's been done before. I'm not the first one, but before I decided on this configuration of how to run the exhaust and intake, I actually got on the horn with the engineers at Navi on, you know, you start, you start out in customer service and they pass you along. And finally I got to like tier three which are the guys who are take place in designing uh, the Navion. And they're the ones that say what will be, what won't be, and what to do and what not to do. And at first, when I gave them my idea, they were like, uh, oh, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, well, no, hear me out. Here's what I want to do. And then they said, oh, yeah, that works. So there you go. I don't know if I'm going to switch now to the sewer ejector or... Or really, uh, like where I'm going next. But now you can get a back view. Let's see if I can turn this. These lights are killer. There we go. So there you go. Give you the mo what they call the money shot. There is the vent. It's in. Goes around. Comes there. We're ready here for the lavy. There's the vent. The vent is all secure now. Let's see. On this side, what I didn't have was this bracket. And I ran out of uh, these are called coated straps for 2-inch. So I took a Greenfield hanger, which is a Greenfield in case. I don't know what you guys call them. Put them in the comments. That's another thing. People use different terms for different thing. Here you go. I would imagine everyone calls this a Greenfield hanger. Uh, it's made for PVC, it's coated, and there's one there. So that's called uh, a greenfield. Uh, but I'm curious, if you call it something else, put it in the comments. This is The whole idea of this, of these videos, again, is for the client. I'm not monetizing this channel. It's to share information. Well, now it has gone that it looks like the master plumbers are sharing info. And that's a good thing. So, yeah, this strap was a greenfield hanger and it was one that was cut too short so i put it in the in the device and i bent it into a u and it became a strap so that's the only new thing on this side 
And one more look at the whole vent. So it starts there. That's the rise, goes all the way upstairs to the roof. That's This is VTR. That rise goes through the roof. Comes down. There's nothing attached to this vent. It goes all the way up through the roof. And it's strictly for the basement. And I explained in another video why I didn't tie it into uh, something else that was going through the roof. Because it's the basement. And because of the sewer ejector is on this uh, system. It could have been tied into something else, but that wasn't what was in the design for uh, the engineers drew it in the blueprint, and this is the way they wanted it. So um, it is what it is. All right. See you on the next one.